In the wake of mass tragedy, the outpouring of generosity from concerned communities, perhaps one small silver lining. The one fund set up to benefit the victims of the Boston bombing has just reached $20 million, ranging from $5 given by children with lemonade stands to a $1 million given by companies. And allocating these funds to the victims is a delicate and complicated process, to say the very least. There is one person who has become the go-to guy in these situations. He oversaw the victims' funds for 9-11, the BP oil spill, the shootings in Newtown, Connecticut, and now he's administrating the fund for Boston. Ken Feinberg, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to have you here and your perspective. You've worked on so many of these tragic settlements. What are the guiding principles that have evolved in your work over the past decade? Well, each one's different, but the one common denominator is emotion. You find that uh, a law degree or a business degree uh, doesn't help you very much once you begin uh, conversations with individual families, individual victims. It's a very, very emotional process, and the only solution is to get the money out that's available as fast as possible to eligible claimants with a minimal red tape uh, and move on as best you can. How do you grapple with the emotions of, of trying to quantify um, who deserves more or less in such a, a horrible situation? First, you meet with the families as a group and the public. You, you have town hall meetings. You invite everybody to vent. Everybody can come to a meeting in, in a local church or the city hall. You give everybody publicly an opportunity to express their view. And then, very important, you offer to any individual claimant, a family, a, a physically injured victim, the opportunity for a private, confidential meeting where that claimant can have an opportunity again, privately, to express her or his views about the program, about a lost loved one, about life, and uh, that goes a long way in promoting the credibility of the program. Ken, what have you learned in those conversations listening to people? People react to tragedy as diverse as human nature. I mean, you will get in these one-on-one -on -one meetings claimants who are angry, disappointed, frustrated, hurt. And what you hope to do with these programs is give them, just on the financial end, one less thing to worry about, one stabilizing influence in a life that has com completely been disrupted, families uh, destroyed, and um, it, it's very, very emotional and very, very challenging. And of course, as, as, as you point out, it's, it's just one small uh, uh, attempt to, to try to restore balance to a life. How? How do you determine who gets more than somebody else? That, that is a substantive part of any program that's very, very difficult. Who's eligible? Who's eligible to even file a claim? And once you decide eligibility, how do you divide a relatively modest amount of money considering the numbers of death and injuries? How do you divide it among the families of the dead? among those very seriously physically injured, those who escape physical injury but suffer from mental trauma? Um, how do you allocate uh, the money to try and promote the objective of getting some money out quickly to eligible people? Sure, you know, I'm curious, uh, there, is, there a, is there a downside at, at all to, to this process or pitfalls or, or issues that are problematic for you that, that you're trying to work through as you go from one event to the next? The downsides are everywhere. The, the, these programs are loaded with downsides. One, why aren't I eligible? I suffered. Two, Mr. Feinberg, you're offering me money. I lost my daughter and you're offering me money. Bring my daughter back. Three, make sure, Mr. Feinberg, when you send me the check, that you send it to me and not my brother. My dead sister hated her brother. I mean, the problems are endless here. And most people, when they come to see me, don't even want to discuss compensation. They come to see me privately to uh, sort of validate 
the memory of a lost loved one. Ken, this is so hard, uh, this, this whole process. Uh, why do you do it? When the governor of Massachusetts and the mayor of Boston ask you to do something as a public citizen, I I'm doing what I think millions of Americans would do if they were asked. In, in, uh, in Aurora, the go governor Hickenlooper of Colorado, 9-11, Attorney General Ashcroft and President Bush, BP, President Obama and the BP officials. You're, you're an American citizen, you want to help people, and uh, if you're asked to do this, it is a bit eerie, I must say, that just when you think this last one will be the end, and you want to return to a little bit of a normal law practice, and then along comes uh, this terrible, terrible tragedy in Boston, and you're called again to step up, and I think you and others would step up if they were asked. You mentioned uh, Aurora, Colorado, the shooting there, the, uh, the Newtown shooting. Uh, so many shootings, so senselessly. Uh, what's your take on, on, on gun control and Washington's uh, inability at this point to uh, make uh, progress in that direction? I've watched that debate now uh, for, what, 40 years that I've been in Washington, almost 40 years. It is a very polarizing debate. Uh, the American people love their guns. The bigger, the better. It's a very, very tough. You have to change the culture, I think, in America. Ken Feinberg, thank you for your service to the people of this country, and thank you for bringing your perspective to our viewers right here on Bloomberg. Thank you.